Hi folks, welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining me once again. Well, further to my recent trailer where I promised to do a review uh, before and after building the Tamiya Mark 9 Spitfire Mark 9C in 132nd scale. Um, I've, this wasn't going to be possible because I built the kit and I only had one, but a friend has lent me his own Tamiya Mark 9 Spitfire that he hasn't built yet, thankfully, in this case. Um, so we can have a look at it before and after. Now I did do, I'm going to be fairly brief on the before showing you the kit because a lot of you have either seen it before or got it yourselves and some people even commented yesterday that I've got it in the stash uh, waiting to build so they want to know if there's any pitfalls and things to watch out for and general advice as well. Um, in fact one person actually asked me, um, the other gentleman said please can you do a video of some, a build video and doing some tips and things which uh, I thought was quite nice, but uh, very flattering, but I'm not sure I'm up to that standard that I'm a great enough modeler to be giving tips out, but, well, that's for you to judge, really, but I'm not a fan of uh, build videos. I find them a bit boring, to be honest. I'm watching the people's and I start going to sleep. Um, it's not the same as doing it yourself, is it? Uh, I know you can pick up some great tips, um, but I I'll think about that. Um, I'll give it some thought, and maybe in the future we'll do maybe something short, but I couldn't do a full build. I mean, um, I'll show you the photographs, though, as we go through this, from the build itself and that will give you some uh, some pointers I think, some ideas maybe as well, that things that you might want to try or you might want to do totally differently. But um, yeah, it's very flattering that people think I'm in a position to start telling people how to build models, I'm not sure about that, <laughs> thanks anyway. So without further ado, let us have a good close look at this. We've got this absolutely fantastic kit. Now this is the first of the new generation of 30 second scale kits that Tamiya built uh, started in came out in November 2009. So this is when a lot of people ran out and they noticed that Tamiya had completely thought outside the box and had done interesting things with the undercarriage where it's interchangeable and very clever things around the engine cowls with magnets and very very thin ultra thin molding that looks almost like resin. It's so fine. So this was really a game changer, as I said. I think I've got a video titled The Game Changer. So you can go and see that if you wish. So I will skip through this fairly briefly, but we'll talk more about the interesting parts that you need to know about. And I'll show you some of the photos of the build and things I did and the other thing to watch out for. I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem though, um, unlike some other kits. So let's get cracking. But before we depart and I open the box, I know what you're all thinking, thinking, well, has he got has he got a finished version? I want to see the finished version. Yes, we have. We have got the finished version and it's hiding behind this box. Just hiding over here. I'm going to zoom you in. Here we go. I don't know if we need to get the lights on this. How's that? Is that better? I think it probably is. That one as well, maybe. Let's just zoom in a little bit more. How's that? So, that was my attempt at it, which I did in um, between October and Christmas 2019. It's quite, um, it's quite a special one. I'll show you this first and then we'll obviously come back to it later. And I'll move it out of the way for safety's sake in a second. Um, but we'll have a good look at it um, while we're about it here. What we've got, um, a couple of things that I did change from the standard kit that we'll talk about in more detail in a minute. Um, I added some detailing work around the engine because I'd seen uh, a chap in America have done this. Um, uh, I can't remember his name now, but um, is it Patterson? Well, Patterson, I can't remember his name. But the kit comes with a beautifully detailed engine, but it does lack some of the piping. And um, if I just get this pointer for a second, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, if I just turn that prop a little bit around here. There's piping missing on the actual model, it's not included. There's this piping, which is from the, uh, uh, the oil cooler to the supercharger. Um, and just one or two bits of other wiring that I've added. Nothing, nothing terribly OTT. Oh, and of course these uh, Rolls-Royce badges, which you can probably see there. Um, and I just wanted to just bring that in to give it a bit more light. There we go, a bit more light for us there. I just wanted to give it a little bit more sort of depth. So I've added those. I also added the um, HGW harness set, which you can probably see here. Uh, those are really good. This is like a fabric harness set. I can't recommend them highly enough. Just be careful though, you need to manipulate them a little bit to get them to sort of um, 
to look worn you've got to sort of rub them back and forth a bit like like as if you were doing it with a piece of tin foil or something to try and make them look a little bit distressed um, the other thing I did was the the markings now um, yeah decals we'll, we'll talk in more detail in a second but yeah they're always a problem the roundels uh, Tamiya's decals are very thick and they don't like conforming I had major nightmares with some of these uh, decals so I actually switched when I realised the problems I was having and I went over to TechMod from Poland and they produced um, a couple of sets actually that were very very useful for us to get in um, and by the way I've got a resin door something else that's one of the other things I had I've got resin wheels, resin door, TechMod decals and the harnesses that's the only additives I put in here I think that's correct um, and then I did all oh, this is um, things like the uh, invasion markings which you'll see in a second if I can turn it around properly I'll bring the camera out a little bit more make it easier yeah the invasion markings that are just the underside only type um, those are all sprayed uh, no decals involved there but yeah and I did some weathering I did some pre-shading so quite a few things on this kit that I haven't done on others especially the pre-shading I hadn't actually done that before so this is my first attempt and do you know what I was absolutely delighted and it was just um, Tamiya Matte Black XF1 uh, and it worked out a treat to be honest I'm very pleased with the results if I'm honest so uh, yeah very happy with it um, I'll just pick it up so you can oh sorry there is yes there is one more additional item I forgot to mention there is and it's the cannons um, they are uh, here they're the brass turned master model cannons and they just have that you know detail uh, at the end of the tips especially that you just sort of don't get just move this so you can see the other one a bit there we go I hope you can see that it's a bit awkward to manoeuvre at the moment if I'm being honest there we go just move him over there a bit how's that yeah and you can see the detail it's got the proper turned end it looks very realistic it's not, not like plastic at all and we've got the canopy which is uh, is uh, able to move we've got sliding canopy all good and underneath you've got some whoops sorry I just need to bring you out for this let's shine that up a bit yeah underneath we've got some uh, again some invasion stripes that are all painted on and we've got some sort of earth marks where there's been some dirt sprayed up when the aircraft's been landing in Normandy which is where it was operating from and I think you can see probably a fair, fair bit of detail there it's a little bit dark I know with this lighting but um, yeah very pleased with it actually I'm very pleased with it indeed it came out perhaps even slightly better than I'd hoped if I'm honest so uh, no complaints from me um, one final thing I should point out this, uh, the markings the VZF squadron markings this is uh, Charlie Fox now Charlie Fox I did mention this briefly once before but um, he was I'll cut this off now otherwise it tends to make me look I'm in a bit of silhouette Charlie Fox was a um, Royal Canadian Air Force uh, pilot um, at D-Day and this aircraft is, is depicted as his aircraft and it's the plane that <laughs> actually shot up Field Marshal Rommel on the Livero Road near a little town village called St Montgomery, ironically, <laughs> uh, Rommel's arch enemy's name, and uh, it caught him in his staff car, of course, and uh, on, just not far from the race course, it uh, shot him up on this big long road, and he was badly wounded, and uh, I think his driver was killed, and several other officers were injured as well. So, put Rommel out of the war, and, uh, and then of course he got raked into this conspiracy with the bomb plot against Hitler. But that's another story for another day. But I was really, I couldn't find the markings anywhere to match the aircraft so I had to use the tech mod set to make them up and do you know what, it came out really well in the end I think, in my opinion, but uh, yeah, so there we are, quite a nice kit actually, if I'm honest, I'm uh, very, very happy with that, so we'll move that out of the way and maybe come back to it later, if you don't mind, because we don't want to get it damaged at all, um, let's put a couple lights on here so you can see it a little bit more light perhaps there we go and I'll just make some room so that we can bring the kit in also that my computer will need to bring in later for the photos and we should put it out of harm's way ok 
Okay, so that is the finished product. I hope you thought that was okay. Bit nice. I've done some weathering on it as well, but nothing too OTT, you know. I really like my weathering to be more on the subtle side. Used but not abused, I think is the term. And there we go, that'd be pretty gentle. Right, now then. Let's get down to business. Let's have a look at the kit. Oh, I need to knock off these lights now, otherwise we'll see a dark thing. Right, there we go. Smashing little kit. Let's have a look. As you probably know, it's got options for Tunisian Spitfire and also one in uh, Indochina, or Trang, Vietnam, as it became. On the side, we have got some rather nice uh, finished examples, like so. Showing the engine, the cockpit. Of course, it comes on it as a nice stand. You can put it on stand as an option because you've got the undercarriage can be put up or down and changed back if you want to change it. We've got a pilot figure that we just saw, Charlie Fox in my case, <laughs> and uh, we've got some photo etch and some canopy masks included. And then it shows you a little bit of an idea here at the end of what it looks like with all the panels of the engine off, which is really spectacular on this kit. I can promise you so. Without further delay, let's have a look at this kit. Now then, I'm not sure if my friend has got any extras in here, probably not I think, but we shall see. Uh, so I won't go through this in too much detail, it takes too long about it because otherwise I'll be repeating one of my earlier vids. So, we'll just gently, there's a lot of sprues, a lot of sprues, a lot of good stuff in here. Oh, there is some extras, hey. Sutton harness, hey, that's good. Another good one, Sutton. And then we've got a nice box here. Let's put that gently to one side. There we go. So we'll have a look. Where to begin? There's so many goodies to look at, aren't there? Um, now then. Let's have a look in this box because it's intriguing me. I can't remember what's in it. Oh yes, here we go. So we start off with this. I mentioned briefly about the very very fine thin moulding for the cowlings and this is what this is what made this kit suddenly a bit of a game changer and changed from what we'd seen before. They, these are so so thin a real scale like cowling. Get my camera to focus. Very very thin. There's two different versions there because there's uh, several variants in the kit but they're super super thin. Uh, now obviously we're not going to open the bags on this one I'm afraid but um, I'm sure you'll see fire coming. So I'll be on careful to do that. There's so much good stuff to go out here. Talk about it for weeks to be honest. But I won't. I won't see. <laughs> here we are. Now. Focus a bit better there, I think. So these are the under cowls so for underneath. There's a Tunisian version and a standard version. And then you've got these super thin Merlin engine cowls. And they are just it's like gossamer thin. If you hold these up to the light, you can actually see light through them. That's how good they are. They're so thin. Um, and they have little tiny magnets that attach them onto the actual plane. And this was completely new in 2009. It was a brilliant idea, frankly. And of course, Tamiya recently emulated this concept um, when they put it on the smaller 148th kit, the, uh, the BF109, not Spitfire sadly, but they put it on the BF109, so that's very nice. Then you've also got at the bottom of here some really nice photo etch. And unlike the Mark 1 Spitfire, you do use quite a lot of this. Um, so I'll bring you in here, there we go. Now the only thing I would say that wasn't so keen on about this, it's quite thick. It's quite thick, you really need to have good bending tools because it's, it's yeah. Uh, it's a bit clunky perhaps, especially on the seat belts. I'm not sure that I would do that, uh, which is why our friend here has got the uh, the beautiful Sutton harnesses instead, which I think is a great solution. And it, it's much more of a sort of a fabric-y style harness. And you've got some lovely, much more fine photo etch here as well uh, for the actual uh, uh, the belts and the clasps and the... Uh, and the guides. So, 
like that little rivets there as well. Bit really nice. And on the back it's got a little guide. Anyway, that's not standard in the kit, so I'll, I'll pop that gently into the, the green box where it's safe. Anything else we've got in here? There's also rods. There's a little screwdriver in a bag. And we've got poly caps and we have got the deadly nudie magnets. Here they are. These are the ones you don't swallow. These magnets hold on all these little panels we've talked about. But they're quite dangerous because they're very powerful and tiny. So you've got to be very careful with those. Put those all back where they're safe. And the photo etch. And what was the other piece? So oh, yes, the, uh, those milling cans. And I think that goes in there as well. So here we've got the the rubber tyres. Now this is the one thing I wouldn't be bothering with at all. Um, I'm not a fan of rubber tyres. Uh, they never look right. Uh, I'm saying that. I recently did a review of the new new McLaren MP4 MP42 I think it was. And that had beautifully done rubber tyres. They were absolutely dead scale. Um, but they very rarely are without a horrible suit. So I'm not sure I'd be using those. So anyway, we put back our We'll put our uh, middle box away there and put that safely back in the bigger box. So, as you can see, we're already in some nice quality stuff. Let's have a look at the sort of uh, paperwork, see what we've got here. So, <coughs> this is where Tammy really scored, I think. Um, I recently did do this review of the Victor Bomber, uh, and I have to say, that for clarity, ethics. They absolutely nailed it, but they, they, what they don't do is give you these nice extra bits, like these little info leaflets with colour illustrations. In this case, it's talking about, you know, the Battle of Britain and then going on to the development of the Spitfire later in the war. Uh, the wingtip development, design developments, have added the cannons, different types of cannon, Hispano cannon, um, 20 millimeter, and uh, machine gun, and they mix them up and then the various different variants right to the end of the Spitfire run. This is really nice because it gives you, it's a bit of an event, it's, you know, it's a bit like Wing Nut Wings, it's, um, it's a, a multimedia enjoyable delve into history, which sadly too many model companies just can't be bothered with and it's a shame. Bear in mind this kit is, well it was £100, it's now I think £125, £130 or more and it's quite hard to get hold of as well. So um, yeah you're going to pay probably you know, 15 to 20 percent more than I paid, or, or when this was bought, the price that this was paid for. So they're not cheap kits, and that's why they put they go the extra mile. They give you something a bit more high quality and a bit more involved, and just a bit more premium of a feel. Photographs the ones in museums here. Um, be a bit wary there because some of these are different models. Actually, I noticed a different mirror and all sorts. So be a bit careful with the photographs. Colour call out. You have this, and this is, I think when Tammy started doing this, and these lovely sheets where they um, show all the colours and the markings really, really well. And it, it just gives you a quick and easily graphic illustration of what it should look like. Um, the only disappointment with this one, I will say, is it's not to scale. And some of the newer ones, they've actually done them, I think that the Corsair, they did them a much bigger sheet than they did it to, actually to scale, so you could cut out. Uh, stencils the actual pattern that you need to make the camo so that's worth remembering so you can't do it with that one unfortunately and then we've got the uh, the info um, instruction sheet and it's a lovely one this really nicely done a beautiful picture on the front a completed one and uh, we'll flip through this fairly briefly because I say I've done it before but basically fairly conventional setup you start with your co uh, cockpit sides and then you've been your instruments um, and I will now bring in my uh, computer because if I do that you can see the actual build which people seem very keen to know about uh, with mine. Let's have a little look if you'll bear with me. <coughs> Get the old machine working and here we go. So you can see here, oh, that's clear, -ish. yeah that's clear. You can see the, um, the, the instrumentation uh, stage with the compass and then you, it does jump around I'm afraid, from back to back and forth so bear with me. And then you build up your, uh, your uh, proper instruments and your pedals and your stick and it jumps from, <laughs> I don't know why it's interspersed the picks. Um, you can see there we've got the 
try to give you a better view. How's that? There we go. Uh, we've got the instruments there. Um, and this is this system where Tamiya have got a decal that goes on the back, quite interestingly. Uh, where are the decals? Oh, here they are. Yeah, uh, here they are. Decals here. Uh, canopy masks as well. Uh, so we'll see, I'm not going to do them, but uh, the decals, uh, probably this is the best decal in the set, I think, <laughs> because the other decals are very thick and give a lot of problems. They don't conform. You can feel how thick they are. I wish Tamiya would swap and get someone like Carter to have to do it for them, because they are a problem. They are a problem. They're one of the things in this kit that are a pitfall. I would urge you not to use their decals, because when you come to do the underside, like here, where you've got con very heavily contoured areas, it won't do it. it will, you will not succeed you, unless you cut them out very, very accurately. You'd be better spraying this with a mask, like, I don't know, Montex masks or something like that. But you won't get the decal to work on there, so don't even try. I advise you, because you, you're going to have a miserable time if you do try, I think. And I did, and that's why I swapped to the others. Anyway. You're building your, your instruments, I need to see it here in the uh, instructions. A um, bit of photo etch going in there for the, uh, I think it's the is that throttle lever? Or is that the, no, it's, I think it's the drop tank release handle, okay. But you do this thing where you put the, uh, the decal goes on the back uh, here, and it, it actually works very well, as you can see. Um, it does work a treat, and uh, and this is the effect you see when you've built up the seat, etc., which is all here. And that's before I've put the belts in, which I did later. But there's a real quality to this. It's very, very scale-like. It's very, uh, very finely moulded, very finely rendered. There's no flash, there's no problems. Uh, as I say, I just changed the way that I, I built the seats because I didn't like this. This photo etch is just too thick. So drop the photo etch for the seat belts. The rest of it I think is okay, but get yourself some little either Sutton or HGW fabric seats, belts, and change your decals because I think that you'll, you'll struggle with those decals at the best of times. And then anyway, you, you then do that and then you start building up things like your gun sight, uh, all the sort of trim wheels in the cockpit and your oxygen bottles, etc which we should come to here in a second. There's the instruments again, and then we're jumping forward and back a bit. Um, bum, 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 bum. Yes, they were in order, these. I've no idea why they're now in this strange uh, order that makes no sense. Here we go. This is the, uh, the HGW harnesses, which were very fiddly, I have to be honest. They were very, very tricky. Let me just uh, bring you in a bit more so you can see this. Here we go. Yeah, they were a bit awkward, I've got to say. There they are. <laughs> um, you need patience. You need patience. You've got to cut them to just the right length and you've got to try and get them through the buckles um, to make them to make them look right. But it, it you know, it worked. It worked a treat in the end. And that's the that's the final effect of what it looks like. So I was fairly pleased with that. I say this is um a resin door, which is much nicer than the... There's nothing wrong with the one in kit, it's just a bit more detail on it, a bit more relief. Uh, I'm trying to think who it was. I don't know if it was Master Model. No, that's not right. I can't think who I got that from there. But if you if you do a search and put Mark 9 Spitfire Tamiya resin door, you'll find them on eBay, no problem. Here's some of these instrumentation pieces that are in the, uh, in the co uh, cockpit, which we've just been showing here. Look, there they are. There's the, uh, there you can see the, how the seat is mounted with its belts in place. That's, yeah, that gives you a bit of a better idea, I think. Then we're doing this gun sight arrangement. Oxygen bottles, which we just alluded to. And then we start on the engine bearers, which comes a little bit later. So I'll just skip back to the instructions. You, you build it here, you build up the uh, fuselage, you pop in that finished cockpit and you can see that I put the pilot in but I changed my mind I decided the pilot actually was the worst thing on the kit in terms of um, didn't really like him I think their later pilots like in the uh, Mustang was slightly better but the Corsair was much better uh, and this early one wasn't great uh, didn't look as good as you'd expect nothing like a resin pilot 
I would just give it a miss. The standing pilot was okay, but the, the seating one I didn't like, and it causes problems for fitting. So I think it does look nicer when you've got this this sort of effect in the cockpit. It just looks much more detailed. As a scale model, it's more enjoyable, you know. Okay, so then you you do your tails and your uh, tail planes, then you build up your wheel wells. Um, this is where we have some of the clever stuff comes in here because we have, if you can see this, you've got some nuts um, which enable you to have um, some fairly sturdy fixtures and fittings for the actual undercarriage, which some of the parts are actually screwed in with nuts and bolts, and uh, ultimately have magnets to allow you to remove them, but the, the actual fittings are, are quite sturdy. Then you've got your uh, gun bay covers, um, one thing in this kit that I did, I kind of was slightly disappointed by, there's not many things, although I'm only about the pilot, but a lot of pilots weren't great then anyway. But they didn't do any proper gun base, which I thought was kind of weird. Um, they, you know, they've done it on other kits like the Mustang, they did it on the Mustang uh, really well. So I don't know why they just decided not to bother with the gun base, because that would have been quite nice if it had a bit of gun detail underneath with the cannon. But they just didn't bother, you know, they've got all the doors covers but they haven't got anything inside so you can't open them up. It's not the camp you went for resin and all this but you don't. It should be in the kit, yeah? £120? Should be in the kit. Anyway, then you want your radiators and you've got your wing tips and you build up your radiators, your wing tips. You've got an option of the clip wing version here as well of course. Um, putting your cat, um, gun covers on and then you're building up your ailerons, bombs if you're using the ground attack version and your flaps. And the flaps were quite, this was quite tricky actually, I remember I had a few, not major problems, but a few challenges here. Yeah, I found it a little bit tricky because you've got this like um, photo etch section and you've got to make sure you don't bend them too much. Then we've got our bombs, as I, as I mentioned, going on the wing as well as the one underneath. Putting in your flaps either in the open or closed position and mine you saw were open. And then you've got the um, upstate, downstate, the flap hinges which actually pop up through the actual top surface of the wing. You probably saw this, we'll look at it again at the end. Um, and that's very attractive on this kit, it looks incredibly real, I've got to say. I've very much enjoyed the way that looked. Now they stick up, the hinges come up. Um, it's like a, uh, there just isn't any thickness in the wing, so they had to have them popping up through with a little door, <laughs> which is quite interesting. Um, and then you've got these little fillets going in and then ultimately you're going to bring your fuselage and your wing together and then you start building your undercarriage. And again, Tammy, I thought this through really well. They created an undercarriage which has got metal rods. You insert a metal rod within the plastic to make it really strong. So it doesn't have any problem with carrying the weight of the model at all. Even if you have resin parts, it won't, it won't be a problem, I don't think. Uh, and there it is again. You can see that it's been really, really cleverly designed, this. Uh, a few little holes to, to drill out and then you've got these options of the different designs of wheel. Uh, the later type have got these like a, a dust cover on them which is a shame because it means you don't see the wheel inside which is quite a nice design or you've got the uh, slightly early version which I think is more like what they use in Indochina or North Africa. Ironically you think that they use the dust covers in, in Africa but anyway there we go. And then you have these um, little sort of marker decals which are tricky you have to be very careful to not damage these. And then you've got things like the hydraulic lines here for the actual brakes, which are really good. I mean, they depict that really well. It's a shame they didn't do more of that on the engine, you see. Um, and then you have, as I mentioned earlier, you've got these screws, nuts and bolts and screws. So you actually screw in here uh, into the bolt that's underneath. So you, you actually lock it in place. And if you want to have retracted undercarriage, you can just unlock it and have the second set built as retracted and you then put them in instead and then they're covered by these little flush covers so you can't see the screws. Very clever. Very, very clever. And then we're on to building the Merlin engine. This is where I did a lot of detail, to be honest. I could have done even more. I didn't do all the very fine electrical wiring uh, because I was pushed for time, to be honest. But I did the, the cooling stuff, which is I thought was obviously missing and looked a bit weird without it. This Merlin, by the way, they, they replicate the same Merlin on the Mustang and on the Mosquito. Most models think it's the best rendition of a Merlin in extruded plastic 
anywhere. Um, you won't find a better one unless you go to resin. Uh, Phil Florey uh, famously said many times, including just a couple of weeks ago, that he bought resin engines and all this stuff, and he said, you know, I didn't need any of it. It was so good, and that was on the Mosquito. Same here, beautiful engine. And you got this bulkhead and all this detail. And this is where I added, like the the uh, between the uh, the firewall, we've got the oil tank and one or two other components where there was no connection that needed to be. There was pipes that should be joining the two between the supercharger, for example. Um, and the uh, and the oil tank, and it just wasn't really present. Which sorry, the intercooler, not supercharger, the intercooler. That's this box here, and uh, it wasn't it wasn't present. Um, so that that needed adding. So I went to a little bit of a uh, length on that. And speaking of which, I think there's a photograph we need to look at. Uh, we can talk about this one. Here we go. We're into the engine now, and. And back into the cockpit again. There we go. That's the picture I wanted to show you. So this is um, Iconic Creations they're called and they make these little plates you can buy and they're absolutely brilliant and I think uh, I've actually got I think I bought two sets because I've got a set that's going to go on the Mosquito whenever I build it whenever I can find somewhere to put it uh, But they're really good. So what I did is I painted black. I put black paint in and then all you do is you put paint in and you wipe it with a cloth uh, perhaps with a bit of IPA on or, or thinner or something once it's dried and it just takes it doesn't you can do it really rough just splat paint on wipe it and you get a perfect rendition of the Rolls-Royce lettering I then put red on top and then I wiped it again I ended up with the red uh, red lettering uh, which I thought was uh, more appropriate some of the pictures I'd seen it worked a treat it really worked well and here's this um, Here's some of this additional piping I was talking about. This is at the front of the cooling jacket of the engine, which has nothing on it and it looks wrong. So I put piping in, but it was a real nightmare <laughs> trying to get it to fit in because I was sort of post-fitting it later. And uh, yes, here we go. And then there's some other various um, uh, wires and pipes that go into various uh, fuel lines and things, which are not, again, just not shown. It looks a bit weird without them, so I added those. And here we go, this is the one that goes into the uh, intercooler which I was talking about. Um, that really is an important one and that, that was actually from a copper pipe which I had to bend to shape which was tricky, I've got to be honest. I'm not quite sure why we've got so many pictures. Here we go. So many pictures of the, of the seat and the canopy cockpit area but anyway. You can see it there a bit better, it's coming along now. And, and obviously there we've got the... Uh, whoops! There, we're getting into the painting stage here, actually at final assembly. So, you've just sort of seen some of this, so I'll just go back to the instructions a little bit. But you can see there, um, you've got your oil tank underneath, and there's two different versions. One, one's got standard tank, one's got an oil filter, sorry, an air filter attached to it. That's for North Africa. Uh, I actually built this, not realising, because I, I got a little confused, and built both. Didn't, didn't glue it. So I ended up with, um, with an, oil, uh, an air filter, it's already built up. So if anybody wants one, <laughs> and I think I may have thrown it in the bin now actually. Um, and then you basically bring that in, uh, attach it into the bearers obviously, and then you start to build your um, exhaust. Now here's a thing, here's an important point I should make. I forgot, I did buy another item of aftermarket and it was some exhausts from, 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 uh, Barracuda I think it was. I think it's Barracuda resin. Um, now there's an interesting point here. These on the on the kit parts. We'll look in a minute. I'll, I'll talk it through. Um, there was a problem on the kit parts. They haven't moulded it well and put the attachment points in a really stupid place. So I decided to go and use the resin ones. But they were actually they were they looked better, but they were worse because you couldn't actually. They didn't have a proper stub at the end to go into the hole. So you, you, you could not anchor them properly or angle them properly. And I decided that it was the lesser of two evils to clean up the ones in the kit. I'll show you what I mean when we get onto the plastic in a second. So uh, I guess my advice on this kit then is just stick with these, but you're going to have to do some clean up. Don't clean up. What One person criticised me and said, oh, you've got uh, seam lines on the, uh, the fishtail exhaust. Well, obviously he hasn't studied a real one because actually the seam lines are in the welding. <laughs> <laughs> and the seam lines that he was referring to were visible on the back. But anyway, there we go. 
uh, there's always somebody that thinks they've spotted something, they obviously don't know the aircraft, they don't know the kit, and they just assume that it's a fault because it looks like a seam line and it's actually a seam line in the welding on the actual aircraft. But there we go, I did have fun pointing this out, he went very quiet and that was the last I heard of it, but anyway. Um, now this is the one area of the kit where I had a little bit of a problem. Um, well, I'll touch the, I've mentioned two problems already, so I did the third problem. Getting the uh, positioning of the mounting the actual uh, engine assembly, which is now at this point you can see it's mounted on its front bulkhead, uh, and it goes in, it plugs into the, what is effectively the fuel tank. Mine didn't, mine didn't seat very well. Now I don't know whether it was because I've got a bit of paint build up on it, because it could be that the tolerance has gone out a bit, you know. But it didn't go in quite as well as I'd expected. I didn't have these problems on the Mustang, so it's a built earlier. So I don't know. It's a tricky one. Very tricky one to be honest. Um, so I'll just, be, just say to you, be wary not to get any paint build up because I think that might have been an issue. Anyway, um, and by the way it's the same with wing nut wings. They are terrible for that. You've got to really not get paint on your parts when you're connected them. You've got to scrape it off otherwise you're going to be in trouble. Anyway, then we're on to these um, beautiful cowlings. The upper side and the side cowlings. And this is where the magnets come in. So what you do is you super glue the magnet in and then you have a little metal, tiny metal plate on the other side that it attaches to with magnetism. And it works beautifully. You can see it here, here's the metal plates. It's on the upper cowling. Metal plate there. And then there's a magnet underneath in the top of the engine. Here, it's all done very subtly. You've just got to take your time with it. And it's a little bit fiddly, but it's well worth it because the final result gives you a really remarkable kit that's seamless, you know, and you can interchange these parts, put them on, put them off. Great for display. And you can see here what it looks like when you finally bring them on. Uh, and again, I was a little bit, I found it a little bit tricky to manoeuvre them in. Again, that could be a paint tolerance thing. Um, so just, just test fit everything and take your time. And then we've got the same again underneath. You've got again two, ma uh, two metal plates here and there's a magnet underneath inside there that you're going to uh, uh, magnetise to. And then you've got these little pins. You've got pins and poly gaps that put your little uh, air intake in there. Uh, and then you've got the other option if you're going for the, uh, the African version with a big air filter underneath. Then you're doing your um, canopy masking. Um, to be fair, I think I used the kit ones, the masks, and they were fine. You just got to cut them out, that's only problem. But they were okay, they're no problem. Just a bit of labour, that's all. And then you've got, um, it's one or two little fiddly bits here. You've got this, uh, there are, I think there are two options somewhere, unless I missed it, for the mirror. And then you've got this uh, canopy release handle, which is a little tiny piece of photo etch. It's very, very fine. You've got to be extremely careful with it. And then you've got the option of having your door open or closed. And as you know, uh, my door, I got a resin one because I thought it was a bit better. And then we're on to the final stages. So you're now building up your propeller, which is beautiful. I've got to say, I really thought these parts were so well moulded. It's really a beautiful rendition of the real thing. Looks excellent. And then your cannons going in, as I mentioned. I put metal ones, uh, which are a bit tricky to glue. Super glue job, obviously, on mine. But the, the ones of the kit are not bad, you know, you don't need to get these extra parts. I was just going the extra mile, really. And then it all pops on like this, and it looks really rather beautiful. And you've got your, um, your tank underneath is the thing that also is the mounting point here, with a big nut. This is the mounting point for your stand. So it's quite an important part, actually. And the stand is quite a good one. Uh, it's, it's sort of subtle, and it's not, you know, it's not too silly, and it's quite strong. Um, just make sure you actually do build it up with enough glue because it's, it's carrying a bit of weight and it needs to be strong, you know. And then you, you put your little um, nameplate on the, uh, the silver sort of nameplate. It's like a big metal decal, really. And that goes on the plastic nameplate underneath. And then you just mount it up there. And then uh, if you want to have the retracted landing gear, then you, uh, you can have both, of course. So you build, you build a second set of retracted and then you can chop and change at any time in the future as you feel fit just by unscrewing the... You pop out these little covers that we mentioned and you unscrew it and you pop in your retracted and put it on the stand. Job done. As I mentioned, I wasn't very taken with the pilot thing. It wasn't, wasn't the best, I thought. Uh, I thought the 48th scale pilot was better than this. And the standing pilot was okay. Uh, so, 
He kind of looks a bit like Charlie Fox. So I painted him up as you probably saw. And then at the end, you've just got your stencil data, uh, usual thing. Got your markings from North Africa, Indochina, and that is that. An excellent, good instructions. Um, I was quite impressed with the instructions, if I'm honest. But I would just say, take your time with them. Take your time. Make sure, remember, that you've got A, B or C option and you need to focus on, at the beginning, which one am I, am I building and look out for it. It's very easy to do what I did. I built all this air filter. It did no harm because I didn't actually use it or glue or anything, but I just didn't need to have this problem at all. It was a little bit unnecessary, shall we say. So, let's have a look. I'll just flash, flash through these other photos and then we'll, put, we'll get this out of the way because we need to sort of uh, have some space here. So you can see here that I am getting into the final stages of the build. And here we go. Um, you can see it's all coming together nicely and then we're getting ready for the invasion stripes, spraying, spraying the stripes. That's what the final canopy, cockpit I should say, looks like inside. And you can see this pre-shading. There's actually a shot of pre-shading. Again, they're not in sequence these for some reason. There's actually a good photo somewhere of the pre-shading which is hiding from us. I'm sure it's here. Must apologise about the order they're in. It's a very, very weird order. Here we go, that's the one I'm looking for. Pre-shading, okay? So you can see I just used matte black and it it worked out fine. It's the first time I've actually done that technique. So for me, a bit of a breakthrough moment. Eureka, you know. And you can see here now the effect. You see that pre-shading just about coming through. Just giving the right effect. Spinner and the prop and the cowling. And you've got all of your interior there. Uh, masking the canopies and spraying them. Decals are coming out here. And applying the final effects here. And here you can see the difficulties I was having with those very thick Tamiyar decals and you can see it won't conform, it won't conform. So I ended up swapping to these Tech Mod ones and I got a little bit of a better result with them, to be honest. Same here, um, I had a real problem with the band on the tail, that, well, that didn't want to conform. That, I should have sprayed that, I think that was a mistake by me really. I think the, uh, I should have done it like I did the invasion stripes really. There we go. So you can see, it's, and there's the uh, the door. As you can see, it's uh, it's come out quite well as that. I was quite impressed with the uh, quality of the resin. Rolls Royce plates are on now, as you can see. And this is the sort of final product that you've just been looking at really. Pretty much done here. Just putting on the final things like the flaps. Getting the, the engine right. That's quite a good photo isn't it? That's, a, that's a, a good shot of the final engine before it goes in. Uh, and I say these, um, this is the well lines that are on the fishtailed exhaust. And they are supposed to be there so don't rub them off or you know, don't scrape them. Here's the effects I was doing about you know, bits of mud that splattered up on landing. Just, just subtle. Pre shading, final spraying, and here we go. This is kind of the final product, really. Um, I did, did a little bit of weathering here as well with the. Uh, see that? Yeah. I did get a little bit of silvering, uh, if I'm honest, on that particular decal next to the fuel cap, which is a bit annoying, but sometimes it happens, you know. But I got a nice sort of dribble leakage. Whoops. Uh, with the dribble defect there. I thought that came out really well. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to get this image right for you. How's that? That's it. There we go. That's the final cockpit, what it looks like inside. Day of the Flying Fox, this is actually a book about Charlie Fox and about how he shot up Rommel. He wasn't recognised as having done this for many, many years and it was only um, it was only in the sort of 70s and 80s I think the historians got together and realised that it actually it wasn't an American in a Mustang and it wasn't a guy in a, I think a guy in a Typhoon claimed it as well but 
uh, once they started doing some detailed history work, they realised it was Charlie Fox. And he never made any great claim about it, you know, it was just that there were witnesses, uh, he had a wingman who was with him and uh, he was convinced that it was Rommel as well that he shot, you know. There he is, Charlie Fox. Yeah, I'm not the best figure painter in the world, I've got to be honest. <laughs> but it came out okay. I think it looks quite a nice model to be honest. And there we have it, pretty much coming to the end. There's the wheels, the tyres, weight on wheels. And there's the, uh, there's the engine. Looks really, yeah, looks all right. I'm quite pleased with it. There we go, close up. How's that? It's quite nice and tight. That's it. Okay, so we're done with that. So we will now look at the plastic and we will have a talk about it as well. Now then, where to begin? Oh, I, I, I must say that this is one of those kits like the Mosquito or the Mustang. Well, of course, uh, they're a pleasure, really, to handle even. It's quite interesting having built it. I didn't use any filler in this kit at all. So that tells you all you need to know. You're not going to have major problems. So the only problem I did have was its alignment with this plugging in the engine into the front bulk. Oh, I've never quite got my head around what was wrong with it. It, it, it was a real head scratcher. Um, I just had to manipulate it more than I expected. Everything else went together like a click fit. Beautiful kit. And you've got your wings here. As I say, this is what was odd when you've got this um, open gun ports but nothing at all that's in them, which is kind of strange. See that? You've got a gun port here, nothing in it. Uh, a bit of a shame, but, but the parts just go together. It's just right, you know. I mean, the top and, and lower wing, they're really nice, the, the joint is beautiful. So that's that one. And then we have got uh, the, whoops, right. I don't know, sometimes Tammy and I do strange things with their bags, they put seemingly completely unrelated parts in, it's like they've forgotten to put it in another bag. Um, but we've got, we've got this rather nice, um, quite clever design because you've got the main fuselage but you've got a cutout for different versions because obviously they did a Mark 8 and they've done a Mark 14 is it? Several different marks that Tamiya have brought out. Um, but the actual, obviously they're in the bags I know so the, I know the optics on this aren't great but they have this beautiful surface to them with this remarkable uh, riveted panel lining detail which is just perfection really. I mean it's just lovely. Uh, and they did disappoint me. I was kind of wishing that they'd uh, the radio, um, first aid and radio box access hatch here. But if they didn't have that open, that could have been nice to have it open in a diorama. Um, just a bit surprised they didn't do that really. Now people talk about the ejector fins. Um, don't think the Spitfire suffers from it too, too badly. There is one or two though that are in places you'd rather not have them. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. You may not make it out, I don't know. There are one or two there that are not ideally placed, but honestly, you're not going to see them. But having built the kit, I wouldn't be at all upset about that. Now then, here we've got all the, the business end of the plane, the tail planes and the rudder and the horizontal and vertical stabilizers. You've got uh, flaps and your ailerons. And again, Every part just went together like a dream, you know. You just um, there's one other model on the internet that always impresses me. I won't name him because uh, probably best not to. But he's really good. He he just seems to go to a Tamiyar kit and he just throws it together and then just puts the tiniest touch of liquid glue on, and that's it. And I always think he hasn't put enough glue on. <laughs> I think perhaps sometimes I put a little bit too much on, but um, I do like a firm bond. But this is so well engineered. These pieces go together. Just like a click fit. It's a dream, honestly. Beautiful, beautiful. Very nice parts there. Then we've got our engine. We'll zoom in for this bit. A lovely Merlin here. And it is a nice one, you know. And I had great fun detailing this up with, you know, the bolt heads. I sort of weathered them up a bit and did a bit of dry brushing with a bit of a, a dry brushing silver. Just to make it look a little bit scratched and worn here and there. Nothing too much, just a little um, and it's really again this just 
this is a, like a model, this sprue is almost like a model in its own right. You've got all your main cylinders, cylinder heads, you've got the main block, and then you've got your sump here. It's just lovely really. The detail is so fine. It's a masterpiece really. You look at the bolts here on the flange at the front of the uh, front of the engine. Brilliant. Gorgeous really. It's a shame to build it. <laughs> and then we've got the propeller. Propeller parts. Oh, look, is that coming off the sprue? It's a bit loose, be careful with that one. Um, lovely propeller. And this full blade, it looks absolutely stunning, I've got to say. And it's got this lovely spinner that goes with it. You've got all this fine detail with your radiators. Um, yeah, and again, everything just clicks together so nicely. It's a dream, really. Then we've got a stand, which is the generic one, the Spitfire. This Mustang had it. I think the Corsair's got it as well. Um, but it's a it's a good design. It's um, it's a little bit on the flimsy side, if I'm honest. If I was to be very critical, so it's a tiny bit flimsy. I think if you added lots of resin parts, don't forget I've got brass cannons on mine, and it does seem a little bit just a little bit um, floaty when it's on it. <laughs> it makes me slightly nervous. Um, and this is the trouble, I suppose. If you add too much resin and brass in, brass resin, you end up altering the centre of gravity. If you're not careful, and it can make the plane tip over. So you've got to bear that in mind sometimes when you're building them, but, uh, but it's a good design, There's nothing wrong with it fundamentally. And then we've got some more engine parts here. So we've got we've got supercharger here. Supercharger. It's nice. Uh, back end of it here. And then you've got your um, uh, your mounting braces for the engine here. And again, I had lots of fun weathering and detailing this up to make it look a little bit oily and, uh, and they're nicely done, nicely done. It's just a shame they didn't do more in terms of the piping and the wiring, that's all. It's only short coming really. And here's you, they've done the cooling elements here. All the cooling pipes, the main ones anyway. Just didn't do quite enough. So I'd say to Tammy, perhaps they should um, just concentrate on that a little bit more in the future perhaps. Then we have uh, a lot of these canopy parts, uh, sorry, cockpit parts, I should say. And, um, yeah, we've got the instrument panel, we've got the, um, uh, the framework for behind the uh, pilot here, part of the uh, fuselage framework, and we've got the size of the canopy, the uh, cockpit, I think it's canopy. Sides of the cockpit here, some very good detail in there. And all your switches and your levers go in there. You've got your seat, which isn't the most comfortable looking seat I've ever seen, if I'm brutally honest. But of course the pilots used to sit on a parachute, didn't they? It's almost like a cushion. Um, but it looks very realistic, I've got to say. And you've got your... Uh, your yoke control here. See this? So we've got the reflections, it's a bit tricky. And you've got your oxygen bottles there. And all the various flotsam and jetsam from in the cockpit. Now we've got a double sprue here with two on it, and this has got the, it's all the underside bits. Quite a few that I didn't use here actually, but so we've got the bombs. I think there are a 50 pound bomb if I remember correctly, quite a small one. And then we've got your wheels which are very nicely done. Although I say they end up getting covered up on my version, they got covered up with the dust covers which makes them disappear, you know. Um, and then you've got your uh, centerline fuel tank. That's actually the one for, um, that's actually the one Yes, the one for the stand. It covers up the stand mounting point, you see, so that you you don't see it. So when it's sitting on its undercarriage, like mine is, you can't see anything underneath that makes you think a stand will fit on it, but you just unplug this and out it pops. It's very clever. And then, what have we got here? Clear parts. Now, tell me I've done this one really well, but say, 
is that protected the uh, the canopy, the bubble canopy, with this bar across the top to stop any scratching, which is clever. Um, and they they did all this really very well. I thought that the instrumentation was brilliantly done. It looks so realistic when it's finished, as you probably saw. And then, um, yeah, it's uh, it's got nice good clarity and optics are good and you've got little clear wing tips uh, in case you go for the clip wing version so then this is this is one of the few things that annoys me on the kit then you've got all these gun port covers and there's nothing in the gun port so what's the point yeah what was the point of it really it just seems work for no reason there's lots of things there that have to be joined and glued in and and worked upon, but there's no you know reveal underneath. It's as though they intended to put gun ports in and change their mind, maybe for cost reasons. Here we've got the figures, and it's the uh, got standing pilot. Standing pilot, who I thought was quite good, and then we've got the city pilot, and I just don't think it's good enough. The sitting pilot, I think it's very softly moulded and he, he looks a bit like a monkey it just doesn't look right at all it doesn't look right didn't impress me I, I, I abandoned him as you probably saw um, but yeah the, the, the standing guy is very good and he's got this nice RAF peaked cap there that's okay then we've got the undercarriage parts and the wheels here let's come back a bit so we've got your um, undercarriage covers, aero covers, and you've got your wheels here. And then there's all sorts of little bits. Now, this is an important point I said I'd, I'd point out to you. This is where we have a little bit of a problem, and it's those exhausts that I talked about. Now, I hope you can see this through the film. What we have got, look very carefully. Very carefully at these exhaust ports points they've connected them it doesn't look so clear to me but can you see how they're here they've connected it right in the worst possible place right in the middle of the face that you're going to see so you've got a cleanup to do and it's right on the weld seam of the real uh, exhaust piece which they've replicated very very well it's probably very hard to see on the camera um, and there's two versions of this. There's the, sorry, the fish tail is at this end. Oh, they're at either end. It's, it's quite complicated. So actually, it's this one I'm, I, that I was using. There's like a. If you look very carefully, it's two designs. There's like a rounded exhaust, and this is the more oval, but fish tail, as we call it. It's like a fish tail design here. And they've gone and got it in such a way here that you've got right in the middle of that well. They've gone and got contact gate, sprue gate contact point, just in the wrong place, which is why a lot of people turn to resin, but the resin ones wouldn't locate properly, they were nightmarish, so in the end, after fiddling around for about four hours, I decided to go with these and clean them up, but what a pain, because every one's the same, you've got to clean it up, each single one has got that same contact gate contact point right in the middle of the weld. Not good, Samia. They've done it right at the bottom, if you look. They've, they've done it at the contact point where it goes into the actual... needs to be glued in. That's fine. But don't put it right in the middle of the exhaust where it's visible. That was done. Wasn't very pleased. This is good, though. This is the um, uh, the outer framework uh, that goes on top of the engine bearings. So it's, it's basically the... Uh, the part that the actual cowling attaches to, thanks to its magnets, etc. Very, very finely moulded, beautifully done. Excellent. And then, and this is the last one, it's incredible, the last sprue. Um, and then we've got all these little little covers that we've spoken on, and the wheel well construction is here. So you build up your wheel wells with these parts here, and, it, and it's like a jigsaw, and it fits together beautifully, I tell you. It's just a dab of liquid, ultra thin liquid cement, and you're away. And here you've got your undercarriage legs, and this is what I was talking about. If you look, they're hollow, 
they're all hollow so you have a metal rod goes inside the hollow part and makes it nice and strong. That was a really good design I thought. So there we go. So there we have it. So that's the kit as it appears. Um, forgive me for not opening the bags on this one but it's an expensive kit we don't want to spoil it for the owner. Um, but you get the impression and what I was talking about. Now let's have another look at the finished product. Um, and we will have a little see whether you can see some of these um, points I've, uh, I've alluded to. Like, for example, turn it in the way this time, I think. Can you put it better on the other side? Yeah, all this is doing is making it difficult for the camera to see, so that's not helping us at all. There we go. So I'll zoom you in. Now what we've got, we were talking weren't we about this um, uh, flap hinges that come up through the top of the wing. You can see them here. Yeah. They've done this really well I think. I think it's a very clever design to get that actually into the kit as well as they did. Uh, I think that's a bit of a masterpiece of design really. And uh, to maneuver it so you can see it better. There we go. Yeah, right here it pops up and then the little flap, when, when the, the flap retracts back to normal flight, that flap just closes spring loaded, you know. So that's very nice. You've got your uh, beautiful cowling here, it just sits on the top like so. Oops, it says this is always going to happen, wasn't it? There we go. Try and uh, see if we can pop it in. It needs a little bit more manipulation, but I think we'll leave it at that for now. Um, yeah, and it's just a nice kit. You know, we've got working ailerons, so I've got no problem with that. No problem with those. More problems with my camera. I think. Working ailerons here, as you can see. Pull down. Um, a very, very nice kit. Um, one or two issues I've mentioned, but, you know, serious issues, not really. Nothing I would say would put me off buying it, uh, deter me from building it in any shape or form. I think it's an absolute belter really, a real stunning model. And it's not too big either, which is a big issue for me these days. I've got that lovely Mosquito, which is just, uh, it's very similar to this, isn't it? It's kind of more of the same, but I just can't, I just don't think I can find the room. I'm going to have to get another cabinet, I think it's the only way, and then I can really have some fun building that mosquito that would be absolutely brilliant I think. Um don't know if we can feed this one in. When you try and do it on camera of course everything goes wrong normally so it wouldn't surprise you if that's about what's about to happen. Don't break it. Whatever you do. Don't break it, don't break it, don't break it. Well, that's candid camera moments. I've not quite got it in high. Looking at the front, it's a little bit tricky underneath. Being a bit awkward, to be honest. There's no good thing. There we go. It's not. It's just not plain ball there, is it? Quite. It's determined to be thwarting me. <laughs> I'm sure you're all on a good chuckle at this. There we go. Kind of got it in. in Kind of, it's not quite clicked in properly at the back. It's, uh, there's a, a sequence you have to slightly squeeze them to make them uh, to make them go in. But close enough, close enough. It's a fine model. It's a fine model. I think that it's a great addition to anybody's collection. You're not going to be disappointed with it. We've got, you know, a pilot here, Charlie Fox, the man who shot up Rommel. There he is, a hero from Canada. Yeah, he had a positive outcome on the war, didn't he? But he didn't realise that day when he was chasing a uh, staff car down the road that he was about to knock Rommel out of the war. Uh, he probably wouldn't have believed it if you'd have told him. <laughs> anyway, there we are. I hope you found it an interesting uh, 
delve into the... There we go, sing again now. I hope you found it an interesting delve into the uh, the Tamiya Spitfire. Um, some lights here that give it more local lights. Like that. How's that? <laughs> hope you found it interesting. Um, I have to say I'd recommend this kit. It's a nine and a half out of ten kit. Yeah, there's been one or two issues that are silly little things they did, you know. But uh, when it came out, it was about ninety pounds. I think eighty-five, ninety pounds, which. Uh, I think it was actually a reasonable value for the money, even even though it was a lot in 2009. Um, it's hard to fault, but don't trust don't trust the decals. Forget the decals; they're no good. Um, if you get this original kit, they're just not going to be a good experience for you. So, for the sake of about ten pounds or you know fifteen dollars or whatever, just get yourself some some alternatives and um, and enjoy the experience because it's um, it's got some. Beautiful fine detail, you know, and it's it's not just the way it goes together, it's the way it actually looks, you know, it's the appearance is just right somehow. It's just got that personality about it. It's uh, it's a really nice example of a spit, I think. Um, very hard to fault it. And I am very proud that I was able to do such an interesting version of it in terms of uh, I had to make up my own decals obviously from the tech mod set I bought. But I was worried it was going to be troublesome and uh, no, really, apart from those exhausts which gave me some nightmares. No, apart from that really, it was, it was a dream. So 9.5 out of 10 I think it is. Uh, it would get 10 out of 10 if it went for the decals and it was a few quid cheaper I think. But it's as nice a Spitfire as you're ever going to lay your hands on, frankly. Um, the only thing I didn't do on mine was I didn't do the... Is it the low frequency aerials that go from here into, the, into pretty much the centre of the roundel? They don't have an aerial across the top. Some people think, oh, they should have an aerial across the top. Because there are, I think, two versions of the tail. One, I think the one in North Africa has got the, uh, the low frequency aerial. Well, this is a UHF radio that changed to in 1944. It doesn't have an aerial across the top. But it does have these uh, ultra low frequency version, I think, um, and I never got around to doing that. I was a bit lazy, really, but you know, I don't think it looks any the worse for it, really. Anyway, there we go. Hope you enjoyed the the review. Um, I think it's always great to see. You saw the photos. You saw the build. Uh, heard some of the challenges. You may um, you may not um, have some of the problems I had in terms of uh, those minor fit issues. It might have just been me over painting it. I'm not sure. But just be aware. Just. Just make sure that any surfaces that are going together are clear of paint. Uh, it was like that with the Mustang as well, to be fair, but I uh, didn't have the same problem with the engine, so that was kind of unique to this. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me. It was um, really nice to have your company. I um, hope you enjoyed seeing the final product. Um, say a gentleman or two, a couple of people have asked me now about hints and tips. I'm not the greatest model, I'm not the greatest expert. But I will, I will have it. There's one or two recurring questions have cropped up, so I will maybe do another video in the next month or so where I perhaps talk about certain kits and show you paints that I used and maybe challenges that I faced and how I got around them, things like that. Uh, I don't think I'll be doing a long video of me making a model, it's just too boring, isn't it? So there you go. Um, I'll, have a, I'll have a think about that and see if I can come up with something that you might find interesting and useful. In the meantime, thanks for joining me. Um, I give it 9.5 out of 10. I hope you'll give me 10 out of 10. <laughs> if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and uh, give us a thumbs up, give us a like. And if you haven't done already, click the notification bell so that you get informed of any new videos that come up in the near future that may be of interest to you. And in the meantime, until next time, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, please stay safe, look after yourselves. Thanks a lot and bye for now.